One of my best friends on GameFAQs, his name is Sonsaru, he has provided me with a list of questions. I've described my method for, for getting the crowns, and so the first question he asks is, if it's, if it's in the game on purpose, why? You, first, you have to understand what it is. Like, what are you referring to when you say it? Okay, what is it that we're trying to take advantage of? What exactly is the bug or game behavior that I'm seeing? So first of all, I'll tell you what it's not. It's not magic. It's not some hidden Easter egg. It's not some algorithm designed to get you to cycle through quests. What it is here is a tendency for monster sizes to cluster around one part of the size spectrum rather than to be distributed evenly across the range of possible values, even when you account for the percentage weights for each size. So the it is a game behavior, and it's likely caused by a poorly designed randomization algorithm. The it isn't quest cycling. Quest cycling is a method of taking advantage of the poorly designed randomization algorithm. So let's not conflate the bug with the method of exploit. They're not the same thing. Capcom didn't program the game with the intention that cycling quests would give you better crown chances. The exploit is something I came up with after observing the bug of monster sizes deviating only slightly from one repetition of the quest to the next. So given that the randomization is not good and sizes are clustering, the other thing that I noticed is that the only way to make the monster size change significantly is to change your quest. So you do different quests until you find a monster size that is close to your target size and then repeat that quest. The size deviates only a bit each repetition. And after a few tries, you'll get the crown size. So why so many elaborate rules for cycling? Well, two reasons. Number one, you want the 3% quests. So you have more crown sizes available. And number two, the quests don't report monster sizes at the end. So you have to measure and compare in order to find the quest with the extreme sizes. Now, if they had kept the monster size stat at the end of each quest, this would be so much easier to do. You wouldn't need to do dedicated crown hunting sessions at all. Just pay attention to the size that's reported at the end of the quest as you're playing through the game normally. And if it's close to a crown, just repeat that quest until you get the crown. Then go about your day doing whatever else you had been working on in the game. First question, if it is in the game on purpose, then why? Why would Capcom put this in the game on purpose? So I don't believe it is in the game on purpose. However, I believe that the way the system was coded is intentional, but that this is an unintended side effect of the way that the system is coded. Generally, we call those bugs. So yeah, Capcom chose a randomization method that doesn't work the way you think it works. And so you're able to take advantage of that if you are paying attention to the sizes of the monsters. And so cycling is one way to pay attention It's basically me describing the best way for you to pay attention to the sizes of the monsters. All right, so next question. If it's a bug, why hasn't anyone else noticed it? Any kind of real bug explodes and spreads very quickly. Take the issues with melding that plagued the game at the start. People were working out which charm table they were on again, everything. All right, um, good question. If it's a bug, why hasn't anyone else noticed it? Simply because no one was paying attention. Nearly the entirety of the player base is paying attention to how charms work. They're all trying to do whatever kind of voodoo they can do to get the god charm. Because so many people say that the only way to play the game is if you have these amazing talismans. And so everybody gets hyped up and keeps looking for the most amazing talisman. It's addictive to them. So you have 99% of the player base looking at that system and analyzing it and paying attention to it. What percentage of the player base does crown completion? I mean, seriously. Well, let's take a look. On monsterhunter.com, there is an article. Um, It does not have a date on it, but the previous installment of this article says data as of August 21. So I'm going to bet that the data on this article is from after August 21st. Of the entire Monster Hunter community, 0.4% of the community has gotten all of the small crowns and 0.4% has gotten all of the large crowns. Okay. That's not 4%. That's 0.4%. That's 0.4%. That's four out of every thousand players. So yeah, most people are paying attention to charms. They're not paying attention to, oh, how do we get all the crowns? Nobody gives a shit about crowns. Let's just be honest. So you have far fewer eyes on this game system. Okay. So next question, if it's a bug, Why hasn't Capcom patched it? They've patched other size bugs, meaning they don't want them in the game. Some of my crowns have taken me 100 plus hunts for both sizes. If that was possible in two hunts, it would be patched. Okay, good question. If it's a bug, why haven't they patched it? You can't patch bugs that you're not aware of. 
I mean, you just got through telling me that nobody's noticed this before. So if it really is a bug and nobody has noticed it yet, then obviously Capcom wouldn't have patched it. And then that leads on to your very next question. It's not really a question. Uh, data. You say, record how many hunts it takes you. Provide any kind of figures other than confirmation bias, which will discard any evidence contrary to your conclusion and cling to anything that supports it. Do one monster or size without rotating and one with it. Then do it again and again, and it's still just RNG. You would need dozens, hundreds of people doing this to prove anything in this matter. You could show me a video of you getting five crowns in a row, and it still doesn't prove anything. You're exactly right. I mean, it's not really a question, but I agree with you 100% on this point, which is exactly why I'm sharing my findings, so that other people can try to replicate it, and we can get more data and see how legit this thing is. See, you're the one demanding more data, and you're also the one telling people not to try to gather more data. I mean, listen to yourself. I refuse to believe this is true without more data, but I don't think anyone should provide more data. All right, buddy. I don't know what else to say to that. All right, last question. Me. There, oh, there is a question in here. I've been crown hunting again, and guess what? I've been rotating. It hasn't made any difference. I take your anecdotal evidence and crush it with my own. Except if this is some function or bug producing this effect, it should surely work all the time. How do you account for it not working then? Uh, reasonable question. Um, the most likely reason that it's not working for you is that you aren't following the guidelines. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, you need to follow the guidelines precisely, and you have to understand like I said at the beginning of the video, you have to understand what it is. It isn't simply switching your quests up and getting a crown, okay? It is a poor randomization algorithm. And so the method I've developed takes advantage of that and provides you a way to hone in on the quest that has a large monster or a small monster so that when you do repeat the quest over and over, you're more likely to get further large monsters or small monsters on that quest. So again, it's not magic, it's a bug. And so find a quest that has a large monster on it. If you've got a, another way to tell how big these monsters are, to tell, okay, this is really close to a crown, by all means do it, absolutely, and share it, share your method. The quest cycling method is, in my mind, the easiest, most accurate, most consistent way to find a quest with an abnormally large or small monster on it because they don't report the, the sizes of the monsters. Um, if you have got a better way to do it, by all means, share with the community. Let us know how you can tell if your quest has a huge monster on it. A lot of people just compare the monster to, you know, a someone else's screenshot. They're like, all right, this is the crown that I got. Here's a screenshot. Make sure yours is as big as mine. That's fine too. But if you're just spamming the same quest over and over, hoping for that size to change, it's going to change very slowly. So even if you are measuring and comparing to someone else's screenshot, you're going to be spamming the quest. Even if you're abandoning it, you're going to be spamming it far too many times. So you need to do something to actively change the size of the monster. And that's where the cycling comes in. Just change your quest and try as many different quests as possible. And so you put those two concepts together, the measuring, forcing the size change by changing your quest, maximizing the chances of getting a crown by using the 3% quests, and you have quest cycling. I mean, these are good questions. Um, I think I've provided some pretty good answers. I'm going to keep refining this method. When I start my new character, we will do the data analysis. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, guys, that's enough for me.